So this is a pretty basic DAISY editor setup. These four mods will allow you to do it alone. Builder items, CF, DABS, Framework, DAISY editor. Any other mods that you want for clothing or maps or whatever, you can just add yourself from the list at the bottom. Once you've got everything loaded, click play. Once you're on this screen, you can click Open Editor and choose the map, any modded maps will show up there as well. The basic controls, uh, W, A, S and D to move the camera. Q and Z will raise or lower it. Left Shift speeds the camera up. Left Alt makes the camera go slower. You can toggle the cursor on and off the screen by using the spacebar. You can toggle the HUD heads-up display by using Y. You can change the FOV of the camera by holding right-click and using your scroll wheel. To control a character, you click Home, and then you click Home again to go back to the camera. You can flick between them. To teleport the character, you click T and the character will teleport to the centre of the screen. You can copy and paste objects by using Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste. Ctrl Z is undo. To delete an object, you just hover over it, click delete on the keyboard. To delete existing world objects in DAISY, you hover your mouse over them, hold Ctrl and then click your middle mouse button and you can delete pretty much anything that's on the maps. Uh, alternatively, you can use the brush at the top, change it to the delete brush and it allows you to swipe deletions basically. For object placement you've got the list on the left with all your available objects, the search bar for example if you want a barrack you type barrack to place it, you just literally click it, drag it in, drop it. To rotate an object just make sure you have it selected, uh, you hold left shift and use your mouse to rotate it. To raise or lower an object, you make sure you have it selected again, but you hold left alt this time, and you use your mouse to raise or lower it. To open the exact properties of an object, you can double click on the box, you get this little properties box, it's going to show you all of the exact orientation, uh, rotation, position coordinates, scale, all that's pretty much everything, any detail that you could want for an object is going to be in there. And again, you can use Control c and V to copy paste, Control z to undo. You get your basic features up at the top of the screen, so in file you're going to have your basic stuff for opening files, saving files, importing, exporting. You get some stuff that's usually used for mapping, get, uh, checking for duplicates and find replace, stuff like that. The view bar gives you some extra camera settings actually, it's quite nice, you can go in there and you'll get things like the depth of field blur, depth of field distance, FOV, vignette, sharpness, exposure, all that kind of stuff. In the editor tab you get your environment settings for changing the time of day, the weather, wind, all that kind of shit. In the editor tab as well you get preferences which give you some nice options for things like view distance and object view distance for example. You also get some more camera settings as well, so you've got your camera speed in there which is quite nice and camera tilt, rule of thirds and show underground as well. Uh, the only other thing that you really use often is the magnet mode, so basically what magnet mode here does is when you have that enabled it will align whichever object you're placing to the slope that it's on. So for making things like thumbnails, placing characters and stuff like that, you just type survivor on the left and you get a list of all the survivors. They don't have images so you kind of just need to guess which one it is. You click it and drag it into the world, same as you would with an object, it's going to be invisible initially but right click and go to control player and then you will be controlling whatever character you've placed. And then again just same as before you click home to go back into the camera and you can toggle between these. And how it works basically is whichever animation your character is doing when you click home to enter back into the camera the character will freeze in that position. So it's really all just about getting creative with the timing and stuff like that. So if you're doing, for example, a heavy attack, you push home halfway yeah. through it, it's now going to be frozen in that position. To edit the clothing of it, you right click, go to edit inventory, you get all your clothing options here, you can choose pretty much anything. Uh, your modded items will be in here too. 
to bring in another character, it's literally just the same process as the first one. You just spawn the character, drag it in, right click, control player, you're now controlling that AI, you have control over its animations, whatever. You just rinse and repeat the uh, same process that you did with the first guy, edit inventory for the clothing, make him look nice, control player, freeze whichever animation to a heavy hit, whatever it is, get creative, freeze it. Same thing here, control player, now you're in control of the other one, the other guy stays frozen. Time it, click home, there you go. You can obviously spice up the background by using objects, whatever it is, I don't know what you want to do, but just spawn them in, drag them, search for it. Uh, you can mix some colours in, whatever it is, get a stop sign, make it nice and red for the eye-catching thumbnails. You can rotate it, make it look all nice, make it look like it's leaning against the barrier. You again have your environment settings to change the lighting, try and get some nice dynamic lighting on, don't make it really flat or anything like that. Camera settings again for your depth of field, blur, uh, exposure, vignette, all that kind of thing, make it look nice. You can take it a step further in the editor as well, if you search for network in the top left you get these three options, you get a network spotlight, network point light and network particle base. So spotlight when you spawn it, basically it will spawn a light which only shines light in one direction. So you can double click on it, you get all its properties in here, brightness, uh, the colour of it, the radius of it, whatever it is. And you can see it's just shining light in one direction, you can rotate it around. The point light is the same thing, same settings, double click on it, visible during day, brightness, the colour, but it shines light in all directions pretty much. Particle based gives you control over some particles, so you spawn it, double click it, and you can choose the particle type. You can spawn in a point light, go down here to diffuse colour, make it a nice fire orange I guess you would go for. When you change it back to be daylight, you will see the difference really, you get some nice lighting on the characters, you got like a bit of an orange outline going on. Spicy, I know, fantastic. Spawning other AI is pretty much the same as characters, but it is a little bit different, so if you want a zombie, you type in ZMB, you get a list of all the zombies, but you can't actually control them, of course. So you instead uh, go into the properties and enable simulation. And whenever the simulation's enabled, it's going to walk around and do its own thing, but when you disable the simulation, it's going to freeze in place, same as the characters do. So you can time that, get creative with that. Now you have a zombie. For animals, they're the same, they're a little bit glitchier though. You'll see here when I place them, they don't actually place where they should. They kind of place away off to the left for some reason. Uh, same thing again, except, like I said, they're a little bit buggier. You need to kind of mess around with toggling the simulation on and off to get them to freeze in place, but it does work eventually. These basically all work the same way an object would, so you can literally just drag them around the same way as you would with any other object. You can double click on them to view their exact properties as well, then you can change their rotation, their scale, all that kind of thing. But there you go. Now you have your flashy YouTube thumbnail for millions of views.